name's Dowd. Oh, Dowd. Well, why'd you say so? He's here now, over in the back booth. Is he alone? Well, there's two schools of thought, sir. If that crackpot did anything to Dr. Chumley, I'll knock his teeth down it. No rough stuff, Wilson. Psychology. I'll do the talking. <laughs> well, I've been expecting. All right, where's the doctor? What'd you do? Wilson! Wilson? Why don't you take a careful look around the place? Hey, why don't you do that, Mr. Wilson? Although I don't believe it's for sale. Miss, uh, Miss Kelly, these are for you. Why, thank you, Mr. Dow. Oh, pleasure, my dear. You know, Doctor, after what happened this afternoon, these flowers really should be from you, should they? Yes. Well, and now, won't you join me? Oh, Mr. Dowd, I'm afraid we can't do this. The situation has changed since this afternoon, but I urge you to have no resentment. Dr. Chumley is your friend, and he only wants to help you. Isn't that nice of him? I'd be very glad to help him. Well, you know, we all must face reality, Dowd, sooner or later. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, I wrestled with reality for 35 years, Doctor, and I'm happy to state I finally won out over it. Mr. Dowd, where is Dr. Chumley? Well, not knowing, I cannot say. Wish you could. M Miss Kelly, I, I don't like to see you standing. Oh, you sit down, Kelly. Would you? There we are. Now, let's all have a drink. Uh, uh, Dr. Chumley did come in here to get you earlier this evening. Yes, yes, he did, and I was delighted to see him. What'll what? it be, Mr. Dowd? Uh, what, martini? Uh, but that was four hours ago. Where has the evening gone to? Four? Three martinis, Mr. Cracker. Hey, I looked all over this joint. There's no sign of the doctor. What'd you do to him? That's what we're trying to find out. What happened then, Mr. Well, I then introduced Harvey to the doctor, and he sat down in the booth with us. I see Harvey was sitting here, and the doctor sat opposite Harvey so he could look at him. Who's Harvey? A white rabbit, six feet tall. Six feet? Six feet, three and a half inches. Now, let's stick to the facts. Now, what happened after you introduced Dr. Chumley to Harvey? Well, uh, Harvey suggested that I buy him a drink, and knowing that he doesn't like to drink alone, I suggested to Dr. Chumley that we join him. Yes. We joined him. Go on. Join him again. Yeah, then what? And then the other matter came up. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. What other matter? Hey. Mr. Wilson, I, I don't like to see you standing. Wouldn't, wouldn't you join us here? Who, me? Yeah. Sit down, will you, Wilson? Well, sit right down here. You say this other matter came up, Mr. Dowd. Yes, there was a beautiful blonde woman, name of Mrs. Smithos, and her escort seated in the booth directly across from us. Well, Dr. Chumley went over to sit next to her, explaining to her that they had once met in Chicago. Then, her escort escorted Dr. Chumley back here to Harvey and me, and tried to point out that it would be better for Dr. Chumley to mind his own affairs. Does he have any? Does he have any what? Does he have any affairs? How would I know? Shut up, Wilson. Go on, Mr. Dodd. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Cracker. Uh, Mrs. Smithill's escort seemed to get more and more depressed as he kept looking at Dr. Chumley, so Harvey and I felt that we should take the doctor somewhere else. Now, Harvey suggested Blondie's Chicken Inn, but uh, the doctor wanted to go to Eddie's, and while they were arguing about it, I went up to the bar to order another drink, and when I came back here, they were gone. You don't believe that story about the doctor sitting there talking to a big white rabbit, do you? Well, why not? Harvey was here. I at first... Dr. Chumley seemed a little frightened of Harvey, but that gave way to admiration as the evening wore on. The evening wore on. That's, that's a very nice expression, isn't it? With, with your permission, I'll say it again. The evening wore on. And with your permission, I'm gonna knock your brains out. Now look, you did something to Dr. Chumley, and I'm gonna find out... Come on! Mr. Mr. Cracker, may I intercede for my friends, youth and high spirits? The time will take care of that. Sure, Mr. Dowd. Okay, boys, let them go. Uh, thank you. Mr. Dowd vouches for you, okay. One more peep out of you, Weisenheimer, and I'll buddy your necktie. Yeah, fine. All right, get back to your dancing. Well, stimulating as all this is, I think we all should have our drinks. Now, here, Miss Kelly, sit down. There we are, Dr. Sanderson. Right. You keep your eye on him. I'm gonna check in those other two joints. And Dr. Chumley better be there, pal, or else. Uh, Mr. Wilson. Yeah? Goodbye, Mr. Wilson. Goodbye. My regards to you and anybody else you happen to run into. Uh, yeah. 
Mr. Dowd, can't you think of anything else that might help us to find the doctor? Miss Kelly, may I take hold of your hand? Well, yes, Mr. Dowd, if you want to. We're all so worried. Please try to think, please. Well, for you, I'd do anything. I'd almost be willing to live my life over again. Almost. But I've told it all. You're sure? I'm quite sure. But ask me again anyway, won't you? I, I like that warm tone you had in your voice just then. So did I. But maybe we'd better go someplace else. Miss Kelly seems to be a little unhappy. No, let's stay here. Kelly's all right. Perhaps you'd like to dance, Miss Kelly. All right, Mr. Dowd, if you'd like to. Oh, uh, not I. No, I, I used to dance. I, I haven't danced in years. I, I'm sure Dr. Sanderson would love to dance with somebody as lovely as you. Hmm? Would you, Miss Kelly? All right. There we are. time since we've danced together. Yes, a long time. Forgotten what a wonderful dancer you were. If we didn't have to humor Mr. Dowd, you wouldn't have remembered at all. I'm not dancing with you to humor Mr. Dowd, Bruce. Right? Well, we shouldn't have left him alone.